Oh, all right, everybody. Uh, my fellow trappers of the interweb. Today, I want to show y'all a really, really cool video. But before we get started, I got two traps here, and they're basically identical. Both Victor number two long springs. Both of them got the Barker mink pan on them. Uh, both of them uh, drowner locks. Everything's identical. Everything on these traps is identical except for one very important thing. Now, what is that thing you're asking? Well, I'm going to tell you, but first, let me show you a little something, something. This trap right here, this is a 24 ounce roofing hammer. This is going to be our dead weight. The trap right here can hold it perfectly without going off. This trap can't even stay set for more than two seconds with me moving it. I don't even think we need to um, put it on the old uh, hammer trick. But, is this one glued on or something? Is it welded? No, it's not. Because we put the hammer back on, we give it just a hair more force. It goes off. What this trap has is known as a Miles Trigger. It's super simple and it makes putting pan tension on these old floppy pan traps. Because again, here's the trap. It makes putting pan tension on them so much easier. So I actually got a model made up. I'm going to flip the camera back around and we got a nice little white bucket lid. And I'm going to show you guys just exactly how the mild trigger works. So, hold on. Okay, guys. So, right here we just got a white bucket lid. And this is just for our background. So, you guys can see exactly what's going on here really good. Now, the mild trigger is kind of hard to show working on traps. So, I went and made a dog and pan model. Really, all it is is two pieces of horse panel, I mean cattle panel that I ground down, but it's going to give us a pretty good generalization so I can explain how this works. So, on these older style traps, you have no pan bolts, so you can't adjust the pan tension uh, on the pan, meaning that when you tighten the bolt down, it makes it harder for the pan to go down, right? So, how the mouse on uh, those type traps, this is how it usually works. You got two flat pieces of metal, and when the dog is engaged, they just slide by. Nothing, nothing really stopping it. It just slides by. The only pan tension you're getting is um, the pan tension from the jaw coming up underneath the um, dog. That's all you're getting. However, with the mouse trigger, you have these little notches, or teeth as some people like to call them, cut into the um, bottom. Which one's which? Okay. Cut to the bottom, and this is going to be our pan. Gun to the bottom of the pan, the uh, little pan notch, make sure y'all know what I'm talking about. It's come to the bottom of this, and you got another one, cut to the top of the dog. And again, top of the dog. Now how this works is, when you don't have two flat pieces of metal, you have a little notch in them, as they slide by, Make sure you guys can really see this. As they slide by, they catch. And it's going to take more force coming down on this side, the dog side, to pull it out of that little notch. So, what used to be two ounces to take off is now a pound. pound and a half, two pounds. Now, you can't just put it... Sorry, move the camera there a little bit. You can't just put a tooth on one side and not do it on the other side and expect it to work. So, say uh, we put a tooth on the dog, uh, but we didn't put a tooth or a notch on the uh, pan. This is what's going to happen. It's going to click. It's just going to fall off. It's not going to work. You have to have these two little notches carved in both. Okay. Sorry, buddy. I forgot to um. I'm filming this on my phone, and I forgot to make move the memory, uh, the video memory over to my SD card. So I had like 0.25 seconds left of time. So anyway, 
Uh, where was I? Where was I? Where was I? Oh, yeah. Well, I was going to go into something else, but in that little relapse, I realized there's some finer points to the um, notches here. Now, a lot of people say that you need to have both notches as square as possible. Just like that. Well, just for my testing and for trying to get pan tension under three pounds, you kind of don't want that. What you actually want is you want one square one like this. As you see, it's almost straight down. It does have a little, little kickback to it, which you're going to want. You want to have a little, a little kickback. You don't want just straight down on both of them. You want a little kickback on both of them. But on one of them, preferably in my case, I'm using the pan. The pan notch, I want it almost straight down with slight kickback. On the dog one, however, since it's easier to um, adjust, I want it actually kind of washed out a little bit. And as you see, it's actually got an angle going that way. And the reason is, if it's straight up and down like that, it's locking in. It's at, That's locking in. It's going to take a lot of force. I measured some of these traps at five pounds doing it like that. And again, if you're, you know, coyote iron and stuff like that, wolf iron, hey, that might be what, keep moving the camera, that might be what you want. But for most of us who are doing this on old coon traps or something, and we just get sick of the real floppy pan, you really don't want that. So you want one of them kind of washed out and kicked back a little bit. You want one straight down, one washed out a little bit. Because then, it makes it a little easier because it can kind of glide up. It doesn't just pull straight out. It, glide, it glides up that little ramp a little bit. And that equals out your pan tension. Now... Now we got that out the way, the tools you really need to do this, you don't need much at all, honestly. Um, you can do this. Sorry, I'm reaching for my stuff. I don't know why I had my files all out of the way. But you can do this if you have a Dremel with a little cutoff wheel. I lost mine. I can't find mine. You can do it with a Dremel so easily and so quickly. When I first learned about this and I had my Dremel, I could do like five traps and like two minutes that easily but i lost my dremel and i haven't been to harbor freight to get a new ten dollar one yet so what i've been using or is just a coping saw i don't even know if this is a metal blade i'm pretty sure this is a wood blade but it doesn't really seem to be bothering anything and uh, a lot of old books talk about this they talk about using a triangle file now a triangle file will work but the problem is i'm having with a triangle file is uh mine is too big i haven't been able to find one smaller than this yet and I just cannot get it to go. I don't know if y'all can see that real good, but I cannot get it to go up under here properly. I always have a weird, a weird angle. So I use this coping saw because I can turn the blade like this, and I can get just perfectly under it. And it only takes a few swipes. It only takes a few swipes, so it doesn't take any time at all. Um. Also, a straight cut, a small little bastard file like this is really good for uh, shearing off the uh, faces. And another thing I forgot to mention, another thing I really forgot to mention, and it's really important because this will give you trouble. On your pan bolt, on your pan notch, you're only going to have so much room in the pan, right? So, say where my finger is right there is the back of the pan that's that's the end of the pan you got to make sure that your um your dog has enough ha doesn't have too much on the end of it to where when it's in here you know say you got gotta explain this so you got this much coming off of uh, the back of your your uh, notch here. You got like a quarter of an inch. And there's not a quarter of an inch room left in here. That's not going to work. That's not going to work. If you got a quarter of an inch coming off and you do not have a quarter of an inch space back here, then it's just 
it's just gonna it's just gonna hang back there. Okay, you're not gonna get that hookup you want. So make sure you take your file and kick back some room. Make some room back there for this little leading edge of your dog. Or take your file and take some of that material off. Well, kick some of that material back. Because you want it you want it like like that. You don't want to have any any uh, extra overhangers. The whole deal is not going to work. Or it's going to work very poorly. But yeah, that's all we're doing. We're just taking that coping saw. Let me see if I can get it in frame here. As you see, we got that a little bitty tooth cut right there. And got this little washed out place right there. So we're finna get in the vise real quick. I'm going to show you guys just how easy it is. All right, guys, so uh, here we go. We got the trap all chucked up in the vise, and doing it like this, turn, um, I got it in the vise by the jaws, and I found this is the easiest way, especially doing the pan, because uh, you're, all the pressure's going straight down. You try and do it their way, all the pressure's going straight up. It's a pain in the butt. So first thing I like to do is I'm trying to make sure y'all can see. I like to take this straight file, just get in there, just clean everything up because this was actually night latched this was short latched and that was there was like no room in here for anything so just get in there and clean that up real quick as you see all, we're almost already getting a two form oopsie then I take my coping saw see I get that really good angle here and it's actually really hard to film Sorry, I had to try and reposition the camera here. So anyway, come here with this coping saw. And again, this is why I love it, because I can go straight down with it. And I'm just going to... Make a few swipes. And as you can see, that tooth is formed right in there. There you go. So now we're just going to clean it out a little bit on the sides, get a little more room, and then we can start on the dog. There you go. Now we can work on the dog here. Now the dog, uh, I know this looks weird, but on these old traps, the dog looks like it's inside, upside down. Anyhow, um... We're cutting the two phone of these. Turn that a little bit. I had to come off a little more than about the same with the, the uh, blade of the hacksaw or the cut off or wherever I'm using. And if you just start off, kind of, god dang it. off kind of slow you can get it in there you can get that you cut going pretty easily here see that's that little notch you're going and you just want to try and get that sorry y'all my camera and the vice nothing nothing seems to want to work properly today i don't know why i finally get a good day where not everybody and their mom is trying to call me it's nice outside nice good temperature and i don't know my, my tools just don't want to work but then again maybe it's just the idiot using them i don't know Yeah, that's about. Like, I, I'm I'm sorry, guys. I, I gotta keep uh, the video seems like it keeps kind of budging around because my my S, my my um storage is set to my SD card, and I 
don't know why I should have like plenty of room for a good 20 minute video, but it keeps my temp, my time keeps running out like super quick. So I go and delete a bunch of stuff, and then it gives me like another minute, 10 seconds, and it's stupid. So that's why I keep going back and forth, but anyhow, there's our notch, and it's kind of shallow for what we want. Again, if you had a Dremel, guys, this wouldn't take any time at all. Alright. That's about the depth we want. And I'll just take my triangle file and I'll just come in here and... Uh, I wash this side, kick that side out a little bit. Then I come on the back side and I just... Clean everything up. And uh, there we go. Got a little oil on it. Now, let's see how this... Uh, see if I can just pop it out the vise real quick. And let me see if I can get this in frame. Yeah. Let it focus. I don't want to focus too well, but this is how it uh basically fits in. And as you see it, locks right in. Okay guys, so this is that same trap we just had about what five, six minutes ago that wouldn't even stay set. Like we couldn't even put the hammer on it to stay set. And we did maybe Two or three minutes worth of filing. That was with me explaining how to do it. We did some filing on the dog in the pan, and now, same 24 ounce hammer. There you go. Won't even go off. Put it on on this side. Won't even go off. Add a little more pressure to it, though. Go right on off. Now, this one is a little bit more than I want. I'll just show y'all really quick how to adjust the pan tension on one. Now, this is kind of a, uh, once you set the pan tension to where you want it, it's basically going to stay there until it wears out that dog, and that's going to take a while. But to adjust the pan tension the way I do it is I come to the dog, and this little uh, notch right here, I take metal off of this side, the side that's going to be touching the side that's going to be uh, underneath that hook and that's just, uh, you take metal off of there, that's just less that's uh, less metal that that dog has to, uh, not the dog, the pan notch has to uh, jump over to engage so that means less pan tension I also, also wash it out a little bit. Give it that little ramp again. And now we got that. And for these smaller traps, lighter pan tension, don't forget to put that little ramp I talked about on. Because if it's just straight up and down, you're going to get some heavy pan tension. So now. Now that dog has less to go over. And that threw right up, I'll say that's a good pound and a half. For a little trap like this, that's basically what I want. So we're going to do the hammer test again and see what it does. And again, this was a trap that we couldn't even um, move. And now, without setting it off, and now we can shake it and do whatever. It's got to get a little bit of pan tension. Take your 24 ounce hammer here. Yeah, right about 20, 24 ounces. It'll hold that uh, hammer up, but give it a little more and it throws really nice and crisp. So, yeah. 
me get this back in frame here. Get it all pretty looking. So yeah, guys, there you go. There's a good way to get um some quick, reliable pan tension on these old traps without having to do a bunch of welding. I know a bunch of you guys don't have welders and uh, you want to put pan tension on these old things because having them snap off all the dang time we're trying to set them is irritating. So, um, yeah, if you guys like this video, uh, go ahead and hit the old like button. Uh, subscribe if you want to keep seeing me do stuff like this. And uh, if you want to see something else, some specific, hit me down in the comments because this video is actually due to a comment. Somebody wants to see a mouse trigger. So we did it.